Test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. S see, look, Makoto was wrong after all. Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly. I'm sure Mondo's handbook broke during their sauna showdown. If I can just prove that, then that will show that the handbook Mondo has must actually be. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just- No, that's wrong. Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The, the fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall? Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it! So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which could mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a gray area, I admit. But no worries, if anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit that I made a mistake. But... S son of a bitch! 
it! What's wrong, bro? Come on, tell him he's wrong! You are wrong. You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning. That way everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically, the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple. Because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there, and the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. And that's where the bloodstains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act, first pulling up the bloodstained carpet. then removing the bloody poster. And finally, carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks have been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Byakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byaki was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. 
There they plan to destroy the last piece of evidence. Jihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it played out. Isn't that right, Mondo Iwata? Wait! No! This can't be right! Where's your evidence? Yeah! Where's your evidence? You need evidence! You need proof! Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him! Evidence that Mondo is the killer. That already revealed itself earlier in the trial. If I can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now. Once I do that, everything will become clear. Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! You're corrupt! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! False! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! You're corrupt! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute False! You. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this. This should on. prove it. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll. We don't gotta do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he did it. I killed him. Bro? Bro, what are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. <laughs> Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No hold on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you select as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? This time it looks like you got it right again! Yes, it is so! The black and that killed Chihiro Fujisaki was... Mondo Owada! Oh, and in case you're wondering, the vote was not anonymous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I... I refuse to believe it! There's no way... No way he would kill someone! Sorry. Why are you apologizing? Why? 
Why, 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 why? Why? Why did you do it? Well, it looks like Mondo's taking a vow of silence. So allow me to explain on his behalf. The story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the circle button to fast forward the text. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You are so weak, even though you're a boy! He had heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite John girl. He had chosen that as his way out. Now nobody will be able to say anything about, even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that chill, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear, instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I'm weak. Weak, 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 weak. <laughs> Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which, of course, included Chihiro's embarrassing secret which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy! And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If it was revealed, it will be the end. The hardened shell will crack, the armor will fall away. Without a doubt, those around him will torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured, being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. And yet... Um, sorry. I don't really want to talk about it right now, but I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger! Now's my chance. I'm going to get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to... It was me. Yup! It sure was! The biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had aspired to. 
Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. And that was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls' locker room? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. But how does moving the body keep a secret? Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, he tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook. See? Then, Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro? We'd also killed? Why would he do that? The more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand! I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why? Why did you- Because, no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. So that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. That- that's impossible! Nothing could have been that bad! Something he didn't want anyone to know. Even if it meant killing someone! It's impossible! How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. Well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? The embarrassing memory. The secret he didn't want anyone to know! Now, wasn't that just a despairing decent video? <laughs> if you like our content, be sure to drop the subscribe and click on the bell so you get notified when our next video comes out. If you want to watch even more despair, you can click on any of the videos beside me. I'll see you later! <laughs>